Welcome back to IGN Live from Gamescom in Germany. Now it's time to take a look at the spiritual successor to Surprise Hit, a normal lost phone. This is another lost phone. Yes. Dan is here to tell us all about it. Uh, no, 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 hold on. This, this game, the first game, a normal lost phone, took place entirely inside a phone. Yeah. Is that correct? And the, the sequel, another lost phone, it's, it's going to... It's a similar setup. Yes, it's the same concept, uh, using a phone as a narrative device to tell a story mm. uh, through the apps and the messages and stuff. Uh, it's a different story, different characters, different um, setting even. Uh, the phone doesn't look like the first one, so it's not a sequel. We wanted to make that clear. But it's the same concept. It's um, using all the ideas that we had uh, along the way. Uh, that we kind of set aside because the game was already coming along, but we took all those things that we couldn't do the first time and m made them uh, made them good. Mm -hmm. uh. So you effectively have to, on top of designing a video game, design a fake UI <laughs> for a phone. phone. Exactly, <laughs> and as a programmer, this is uh, kind of weird for me because I used to do uh, apps before, oh. and uh, now I had to do fake apps <laughs> and also fake um, OS. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So like I mean when you go back and play a game like Super Mario Brothers mm -hmm. it, like you can it just still looks like a side scrolling platformer game right mm -hmm. but what happens when you play like another lost phone in 10 or 15 years like phones could be I completely don't know. different looking by then I don't know um thing is it doesn't look like an Android or an, or an iPhone and I mean not exactly uh uses the same um uh habits so like having the the home button at the, the bottom of the screen having you know back swipe interactions and stuff like that but uh, yeah, if in 10 years we have AR um, sure. helmets or whatever, <laughs> we aren't prepared for that. Just, there'll just be chips in our head yep. yes. and we receive phone calls. But we will make a, another lost chip in our head. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> lost my chip. I think you just announced the game. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here first. Now, w one of the things that I feel like as sort of this sort of not a technophobic person, but a person that sort of constantly feels inundated with that little red light in the mm -hmm. corner of every app, like there's something else to check, yes. there's something else to look at. Um, you made a game about sort of adding more to that pile. Mm -hmm. Like, is, is, are, are you able to manage all that stuff? Is that something that, like, are, are you sort of leaning into that problem that people have as a society? Um, I don't know if we are leaning into that, but we are definitely using it as the, the base for our narrative. Mm -hmm. uh, so the whole point of the, the game is to um, investigate what happened to the owner of the phone. So you don't, uh, you don't get new messages, you don't see things unrolling as, uh, as you play, mm -hmm. you only witness what has already happened. Uh, and so you dig through all this past stuff in order to piece things together and understand the, the character and their world better. Our and phones. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, please. Yes, go. I think every phone tells a story. So mm -hmm. Like yours, probably. If we were to uh, open it on stage and yeah. look through your apps, we <laughs> won't do that. Uh, <laughs> it would tell a story. Uh, that's definitely valuable because it's yeah. true. Uh, and uh, so th that's the whole point of this game and the, the previous one before. Um, they are just normal stories. Nothing weird here, except maybe if this is in a game, it's not by uh, sure random chance. We have bigger, uh, you know, message, uh, mm -hmm. underlying message mm -hmm. in, the sure. in the whole experience. Uh, like I was going to say, our phones have become so personal. Yeah. It's like kind of private. Yeah. It's like so much of our lives is, is inside there and we spend so much time looking at it. It's gotten to the point where like I don't feel super comfortable letting a stranger uh -huh. use my phone anymore. So I imagine like looking through, uh, you know, a, a stranger's phone, looking through their text messages and their emails and everything must feel very like... I feel very invasive. Yeah, there's. I was going to say there's like a perversion to him almost of like holding someone else's phone for a long time, being like, oh, they might get a text from somebody that I wasn't supposed to mm. read, you know? Mm. So is, is does that sort of play into this? Um, we try to uh, work around that because we don't want the players to feel too bad about doing this. It's like, it's a video game. We want you to believe that could be true because there are like real life lessons that you can take from it. But don't think too much about it. Like it's, okay. it's a video game. <laughs> so video we, game. <laughs> we even added uh, like more... Um, um, disclaimers at the beginning of this one because uh, in a normal lost phone people would like play for three minutes, four minutes and say I can't do that anymore. Uh, so I think it's it's a um, it's a legit way to play. I mean like you don't want to do this and this is you speaking, this is the player speaking. Sure. I don't want to do this and this is this like you can do that. Um, there is an option that right from the start you can go into the settings and just erase the phone's data. So of course it's not going to erase anything, but it just, um, it's an ending. 
Hmm. It's it's one you can get after yeah. like five that's seconds, but it's really that's an ending. You, so you, right off the bat, you can just be like, I'm deleting everything in this phone. Yeah. I don't feel comfortable doing this, Why and not? then the game ends. Yes, man, that's because kind of it, awesome. and the person never gets found. <laughs> if, you yeah. if you can't do that, uh, it means the game is forcing you to, you know, do it, dig, dig yeah. through that phone. And if you don't want to do it, you you need to have uh, this escape plan. Wow, that's a great idea for like a speedrun video. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, the, the, the first game uh, could be speedrun in uh, 23 seconds. What? Wow. And half of that was spent waiting for a notification to pop up. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think this one is going to be even shorter uh, if you want to speedrun it. Yeah. But you can't do that on the first playthrough. You need to uh, you know, get through the whole game and then you have all the passwords that you need. Mm -hmm. But the ending is, you know, right there it's under your eyes and you just can't access it because you don't know everything about the story and the characters yet N now what made you guys sort of decide to go with the approach of having hand-drawn photos on the phone and not actual like mm. photos that you took in the wild um once again this was for um creating some sort of distance mm. um because well i think the the, the base point wise uh it was easier to do because the, the first game was made during a game jam in 48 hours uh and so we went with what we had. Uh, we almost went with uh, live pictures and videos. Uh, we almost went to a party during the game jam just to shoot some uh, real life footage, mm -hmm. but we didn't. And eventually we realized that having um, uh, drone pictures, not real life things, um, uh, let us have this kind of distance that you, you can't believe that it's true because it reminds you of real life things. It's right. not like entirely cartoonish. Uh, but still, there is this uh, like a disconnect. Yes. Yeah. And it's important, uh, so it's not too, you know, heavy, mm -hmm. because the the themes um, they they can get heavy after a few minutes, a few hours of of play. Uh, you start to to dig through uh, very deep stuff, and uh, having having something too dark, even in the in the visuals, would be like overwhelming sure. and pretty hard. Um, some pe some people have um, um, cried a lot playing the first one. Mm. Uh, we expect them to maybe cry a bit uh, during this one as well. We were uh, looking through the calendar here, and I saw this person had a vacation planned for just one day. Yeah, that's why not? that's probably why they're missing. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, if you want to comment on what's happening on screen, uh, we are digging through the calendar right now and seeing the messages. I think. We have connected to the Wi-Fi network um, because the password was stored somewhere in one of the apps. And now I think we are trying to access the um, PowerJob app, which is um, a professional social network. And because we are connected to um, an, uh, a Wi-Fi network that we don't know yet, uh, the app has detected that it might be unsafe. <laughs> so we have to um, uh, recognize some of the contacts from the social network to prove that we are indeed uh, Laura, the owner of the phone. Oh wow! And we aren't, but <laughs> by <laughs> digging through Laura's things, we can find uh, this person, for example, who whose portrait was in the PowerJob app. Uh, and by uh, cross-referencing with the calendar and the messages, we can find her name, and we can say, "Yeah, I know who that is. I am totally her friend." <laughs> and now we can access the uh, the PowerJob app. Oh, wow. It's a very cool, very original idea for a game. It's called Another Lost Phone, and it totally makes me want to go back and try A Normal Lost Phone. Yes. Uh, the first game in the series. So uh, this, the, sequel, the spiritual successor is coming yeah. to PCs, smartphones this fall? Uh, this fall, very this soon. Fall. Very cool. Um, PC, Mac, and Linux on Steam, also uh, on HIO, and uh, mobile, so iOS and Android. Cool, cool. Thank you so much for coming by the show. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Stay tuned. So much more to come here on day two of IGN Live at Gamescom after this.